Your lesson settings will change any settings that you have in your current lessons. Um, changing any session settings will only apply to the lessons with new codes. So for example, if I'm changing it right now from here on out, these will be the settings for the lessons. Um, so we have several settings for lessons. You have your basic student settings, your accessibility settings, live participation settings, and your student pace session, uh, sessions settings. So the first one we're going to talk about is your basic student settings. Um, this section is fairly important because here is where your students will have the capability of using their Google credentials to autofill in their names. That's important because on any other instance, if this remains off, the students can put in any name that they choose, whether it's a nickname, another classmate's name, or a name that they've made up. Um, when you're collecting the data back from the activities that you have assigned to them, you want to make sure that it has their name. And if you turn on the autofill student names, it will give you the student name that is associated with their Google credentials, which is usually their first and last name or how they're rostered through Clever, which is their first and last name. And so you need to see that in the data. The second part is another option where you can allow students to take notes in Nearpod and they'll take a um, once they get those notes in, they'll receive a copy later on. Um, this is probably more important for your upper grades, um, especially those students that are annotating notes or um, solving math problems and you would like to see their steps or you can refer them back to their steps so that you can point out errors um, or missteps. You can turn this on or you can leave it off. Out of the basic student settings where you wanna customize your student's experience, I would suggest just keep the auto uh, fill student names on. The enable student notes is important, but again, I would only use that for your um, middle, high school, and maybe your upper elementary grades. The next part is your accessibility settings. This provides support to your students who need those accommodations. We always want to make sure that we give those accommodations to those students, especially as it's written in detail in their um, IEPs or IAPs. Um, if we turn on this one, this is the immersive reader, it will allow students to have support for text. Um, when I say support for text, it includes text to speech. It will also put it in an audio language that they can understand that they can speed up or slow down. And and it will translate into their native language, which is perfect for your ELL students. Um, as a teacher, I would leave this option on for all students. Um, if you turn it off, you would have to toggle back and forth between the lessons. Remember that these settings are saved as you, after you've done the setting. So if you set this just for one student, or you're thinking I should only set this for one student, you probably can turn it on and have it applicable to all of your lessons, but the students that need it can use it. After accessibility settings, we have our live participated participation sessions. Remember, live participation is when you are doing it with your class. Um, and so you want to customize what they can do when they're live with you. So the first thing is default to student view. Um, if we turn it off, we would only see the view of Nearpod from a teacher's perspective. And if you're displaying this in front of the class from a teacher's perspective, then you can see the students' activities and you can also see their scores. So I would not default it to the teacher's view by keeping it off. I would turn it on and default it to the student's view because you want them to actually see it how they would see it on their screen and not how you as a teacher would see it on the screen, especially if it's going to post scores or where the students are with their progress or if it's going to post the student's answers. Um, the next one is allow students to edit and resubmit their answers. If we turn this on, you will give your students the ability to change their answers and resubmit their answers in Nearpod. This is good, especially for those students who are going back to self-correct, which you want them to do. Or if you've given them any feedback, it'll give them a, the ability to go back in and resubmit their answers based on that feedback. These are settings um, available in live participation mode only. If we're in student pace settings, this is when our students work independently. There are three settings. Um, the first one is to require student responses and to prevent skipping. Okay, 
this is a hit or miss because sometimes we want our students to be successful and answer those questions that they know first and then come back later to the questions that they don't know so that they don't lose time. When they're taking assessments, whether it's state assessments or in-class assessments, they have the ability to do that. So you may want to do that in Nearpod. If you turn it on, then the students are required to respond and they cannot skip any answers. So be mindful of that based on the assignment that you give them. The next one is to share the quiz and multiple choice question results. This will allow them to see their results from a quiz or multiple choice question um, when they are playing a game. Um, they can see, you know, if they didn't get anything correct, they can go back in and change their answers. If you're taking notes based on this or you've done a study guide, they can actually see the results of their questions and compare them to what the actual answer would be. The last one is to enable the Collaborate Board. This will allow students to post on the Collaborate Board during a student pace lesson. So if you are giving a student pace lesson to your students and there is a Collaboration Board in the lesson and you want them to be able to interact with students, although they're working independently, you want to turn this one on so that they can do this even though they're not working in a live participation mode and it's not being displayed on a screen. Um, I like that because they can also comment on the board. You can moderate the comments by turning those off or on when you set the lesson. So it still will allow for collaboration, but you can monitor those responses. And those are just your basic settings in the Nearpod.